Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 25 that is grid structure. So far we have seen different kind of structural form and their uses in uh, building forms as structural material or else uh, to just make the form. And we have discussed about compressive structure, tensile structure, dome. And now we are coming uh, in a part where we will discuss about the grid structure. Though this grid is very commonly known as some you know uh, very commonly we can say the rectangular pattern, the square block and all. Uh, partially uh, this is the same thing that we will be uh, talking about. So, let us start this particular lecture. So, basically uh, if you see uh, in this slide that grid is a two dimensional resisting structure. So, what exactly it is uh, for that we need to know about the one dimensional structure. So, uh, I take to the next slide then again I will come back to the first slide. Uh, so, whenever you have uh, a frame structure a uh, flat slab structure. So, basically what you have uh, the number of columns and then the slab the load applied on the slab then distribute it and transmitted to the column and column will transfer load to the you know lower floor and then to the foundation. So, that is the phenomena, but uh, in this particular case we have to like give uh, this particular beam in one direction in one dimension is given either in x or either in y. So, here if you see this is a rectangular slab and the beams are provided parallelly to that. But the problem with the one dimensional uh, arrangement is whenever you have give a point load, the corresponding beam will get more deflection and there is not much uh, you know deflection in other parallel uh, you know beams. So, that is why sometimes this will not really act uh, you know uh, very efficiently or uh, will find that we are we have to restrict ourselves to reduce the span of the room to have this. And in order to overcome that we may add uh, some of the members and we just make grid form. So, then on load applied so that will be distributed in more uh, you know in a more better way. So, coming back to the slide first slide. So, here exactly uh, this is uh, what said that it is two dimensional not in one direction, but both the directions we have the beam they are uh, you know interacting with each other. So, whenever there is a point load, so that can be easily distributed. This kind of structure can be applied for the foundation, where uh, the surface is very flat and also as ceiling or your floor. So, for the foundation, so here uh, if you uh, look into this picture, so the first the bottom one is basically uh, solid slab as foundation base, but here it is basically if you see that uh, in this case it is not the solid one, but it is improved. So, basically it will have uh, a particular grid structure and it is having some thickness. So, also we offer uh, you know uh, say this thing as waffle, waffle slab. So, this will not only reduce uh, the you know material, but also it will increase the efficiency of the structure. So, one particular uh, discussion when we discussed about uh, efficiency of a structural form, then we have seen that whenever we take one uh, solid rectangular section. So, maximum bending that occurs in the outer fiber, whereas the 
you know center uh, there is less amount of stress. For that we can improve it, we can make uh, this as I section. So, we can easily remove this particular portion of the solid uh, section and improve uh, structural section to make it cost effective and also when you reduce the material remember that that will also reduce the dead load. So, that is advantageous. So, like with taking that concept this uh, grid structure being formed it need not to be a orthogonal or you know mutually perpendicular grid that always you know vertical and horizontal line they are crossing each other at 90 degree, but sometimes also we get different kind of uh, you know relationship between horizontal and vertical members that we will discuss in uh, upcoming slides. Talking about the material the concrete wood or metal that can be used and these are the materials like uh, we can use for creating different shapes. Then it is providing more structural stability without using a lot of additional material mm -hmm. and you can compare this two figure where you can easily identify the reduction of the material uh, between these two by solving the same purpose to make the stability. It is also effective for the large span that uh, earlier we have discussed when post beam column that if we want some large span. So, we have to increase the depth of the beam or we have to place multiple number of columns, but multiple number of columns essentially block the space, but when we require to have this column less then uh, the way is to increase the depth of the beam if we go with the frame structure, but there are other alternatives. Uh, like we can go for sail structure, we can go for dome structure, but if we confine ourselves with a very uh, straightforward flat structure, then uh, this uh, waffle slab or this grid structure can help us, where both direction uh, you know cross beam can help us to increase the span uh, that uh, required for say a you know ballroom or maybe a party room, uh, maybe a conference hall, etc. So, here you can see another picture of the same thing where the large span being supported and normally this kind of structure being used in parking, uh, maybe in uh, public uh, stations, airport, even earlier I have shown one example of uh, you know Mumbai airport where uh, this kind of uh, waffle slab being used in a different format. So, we will also discuss that with a picture. Now, here the limitation with one dimensional as already I have mentioned, but here if you again see that uh, though they have some parallel members which are uh, drawn with the black color, uh, these are parallel uh, beams that is getting you know giving support to the upper slab, but due to a point load the deflection on this particular member which is uh, black color bolt uh, is taking much deflection and there is uh, considerably very less effect on the others. Uh, whereas, if we make the grid so that can be uh, distributed uh, more efficiently. Now, coming to uh, this slide it is basically showing the overcoming limitation of this one dimension with the two dimensional. So, now how we uh, get the idea of the grid. So, now here it is both it is a square form and grid uh, being placed where L by 2 uh, into L by 2 is one particular grid and as because the length are same and it, it is making 4 square out of a big square of uh, having a side L. So, the distribution of load in all the cases it is equal P by 4, but the moment we just make it uh, say rectangular and in that case depending on the shorter uh, corner and uh, the further corner the load will be distributed. Uh, in a different manner. So, load will essentially distributed to its the shorter side. So, here you can see the uh, 8 uh, upon 18 uh, this is basically the load uh, that will be transmitted uh, to the this particular you know support and where at it is less. And if you increase uh, the number of uh, this uh, you know shorter side uh, beam then probably this load again be distributed further. So, here you can see that the similar picture now being distributed more evenly. So, it represent that when we go for the equal length in both direction 
distribute uh, the load more efficiently, equal length can distribute. So, here if you just consider this is a square of uh, equal length and then it is being divided by 3 by 3 grid uh, of equal size, then any point load anywhere will be distributed more efficiently rather than any other form. Now, uh, coming to the load transfer, how it will uh, transfer the load already we have seen with the schematic. This is some image where you can see that uh, uh, here you can identify a column, there you get another one and here at the end. So, this span is uh, considering the human scale of say maybe 5 feet 6 inches. So, this will have a good span which is being supported with the waffle slab or sometimes also referred as the coffer slab. So, any load uh, you know given on that that will be distributed uh, through this particular support and at the end and the more efficiently you make the grid the distribution will have uh, that efficiency. Now, coming to the materials uh, to be used for the grid already I have mentioned that RCC uh, reinforced cement concrete can be used, wood can also be used to make some uh, you know structures especially in interior. Uh, it will make something which is structure, structurally stable as well as aesthetically pleasant. And metal uh, grit is also being used for the industrial project as well as some of the cases where you know some uh, office buildings or some shopping malls they have used this kind of structure. Now, coming to the type of grit structure depending on the arrangement of the grit uh, it can be classified. Uh, like rectangular beam grid or orthogonal grid, then dia grid or skew grid, three way grid and oven grid. So, what are those? So, taking this terminology rectangular, it means the grid will be in a very rectangular pattern and orthogonal means that horizontal and vertical members, they are making say 90 degree angle. So, this is orthogonal grid, dia grid where it is basically uh, not parallel to the end support. So, it will have some diagonal or angular member. So, this is basically your dia grid or skew grid and it may vary uh, uniformly or maybe sometimes uh, it can be something where uh, irregular grid may form. Three ways grid is basically referring to the grid of your triangle, where uh, you know triangulation will take place so that it can develop the grid pattern. An oven grid is basically uh, something where like it is uh, uh, coming from the whip. So, you have some kind of interlacing about the uh, uh, between the object. So, here in this case, if I try to draw it, so it is something like this. So, they are interlocking each other. Okay. So, I will also show with uh, the images. So, rectangular grid beam or orthogonal grid where uh, like if you can place uh, your beam and this particular grid so that each will form a square uh, of say equal length. So, that will be more effective. So, here you can see how it is being made and uh, for this also you do not need really a uh, very uh, you know high thickness you can reduce it, it can be of thin thickness, but it can able to hold this much. So, uh, many buildings in you know, government buildings earlier for their canopy they have used this kind of rectangular uh, beam grid or orthogonal grid. Proceed with uh, the diagonal grid here you can see that it is uh, something where the you know grid being placed in a form of arch and they are crossing each other. So, it is not very straight. So, each will have some crossing nature and that is uh, forming this particular grid. Again it is being used for uh, a public like uh, you know this is the office area where you can see the cubicles and all. So, this roof being created. Coming to the three ways grid as I mentioned that um, it will uh, make a formation of your 
um, triangle or hexagonal shape for the roofing. Now, oven grid at, uh, as I mentioned, so this will look like something this, the interlacing take place. So, uh, if you consider this image, the concept image, it is basically uh, the oven grid. Now, in this case, why it is uh, more effective than the previous one? Here you can uh, identify, if you see this image before deflection, so you have one particular beam at the top and then you have other members just below it. So, they are not in the same plane, so one place after another. So, in that case, if a load is applied where it is being shown, so the deflection will take place here, that can create a pressure on the other junction and that can uh, you know result in some upliftment of this particular structure. Whereas, here if you put the pressure, so this upliftment, the tendency that can be covered up with this. So, whenever this is interlacing most of the buckets we uh, see uh, made of plastic or made of say bamboo, they are this kind of uh, oven structure being followed. So, in uh, building perspective also, we can go for uh, this uh, kind of oven structure which will uh, reduce the upliftment tendency of the structural member. Now, let us uh, just go through some of the images where uh, this uh, waffle slab or coffer slab being used uh, maybe sometimes in structural purpose, sometimes also with structure the ornamentation and especially uh, in the period of Roman architecture and then uh, next Gothic Byzantine that time along with the structure. So, they also focused on the ornamentation and here is one of the example where decorative coffer uh, ceiling being displayed. So, you can easily identify those uh, grid which is making this vault and uh, I am sure that uh, if you followed the earlier lectures there where we discussed about different kind of vaults. So, this is basically a barrel vaults, but here the ceiling being made with the coffer ceiling. And this needs no introduction. So, this is uh, the dome, the roof of your uh, pantheon. So, here also you can see how the uh, coffer slab uh, reduce the material of the dome. So, that is way also it is reducing the date load of the dome. Coming forward, this is uh, at Santa Maria, Rome. So, here also you can see that how decorative it is along with the structural material is uh, more of the decoration. Now, this kind of uh, structure nowadays we can see in uh, many public stations as I mentioned. So, here also uh, this is also referred as your ribbed, ribbed structure, okay, where again the orthogonal grid being just given a form of a you know uh, arch and then it is being placed. So, this the material, the upper material may be of some transparent translucent material to you know get the daylight uh, during day time or else it can be of the concrete or any other material to just cover it. So, this is being useful and you can see that the span, the main use of the arch and this waffle slab construction essentially reduced uh, the amount of material here and also uh, it is helping out to get a nice aesthetic, very clean and visually pleasant structure as a roof. And here you can see that the same material being used as wall and roof. So, this is basically again a vault form structure, uh, but here the orthogonal grid being used. Coming to another one, again it is made of some wooden uh, uh, for interior, the wooden grid and you can see the decoration, how beautifully it being placed and it is also covering a good span. So, without any vertical support here, how it is being supported. And this is the example from uh, your uh, Mumbai International Airport, uh, there you can find this kind of waffle slab. So, here also you can see, you can identify the span how big it is, though it is just a rendered picture, but at the actual picture also will get the similar thing 
uh, about uh, this kind of arrangement. So, very nicely, very uh, beautifully executed waffle structure at Mumbai International Airport. Coming to this, uh, this is the Metropole uh, in uh, Italy, Metropole Parasol. So, here also the grit is uh, something which is uh, non uh, or we can call unorthodox and here different curvature being formed with different geometry and the structure is being optimized with the reduction of this. So, this is basically giving a sense very you know a dynamic uh, uh, flow of uh, you know some something which is uh, giving a sense of flow. So, this is a open area planning a closed form uh, not a closed form architecture. Now, coming to the grid structure again it is a uh, your lot detail communication development center. So, here also you can see that this particular cantilever and uh, it is uh, having a good span that can be uh, easily you know covered with this grid or waffle slab. So, this is advantage of the waffle slab that being used uh, where like the building can be of a rectangular shape, it can be of uh, some curve shape, but this will help to distribute the load uh, eff effectively and at the same time it will reduce the amount of material from the section, it is improvement of the section and also uh, can be used for the large span. Now, so as to uh, align the service which is very important for the flat slab also we put the reinforcement and then also we try to make the false ceiling uh, to cover it. But as because it is getting a depth and sometimes like uh, if that can be done with the mold and specially this being designed then all the services can be fixed within that. So, this is one example where the pipe lines can go and here also you can see the electrical fittings how it can be adjusted with it that section. So, that with uh, the depth of the waffle slab that we referred the depth of the waffle slab means whenever you have this kind of you know grid structure. So, this is the depth. So, within that depth we can uh, able to put all these uh, you know services. So, that it can give a nice look from the outside. At the same time that can be also used to create some skylight uh, for some public area where the last pan is being covered. So, this is another useful uh, uh, you know application of this buffer slab. Now, coming to the advantages of that resist heavier load and can be used for longer span compared to the flat slab. For long span solution there are many, we can go for arch, we can go for uh, your um, dome or shell structure, but compared to the flat slab if we go for the grid slab or grid structure that can uh, be used for the longer span. Suitable span up to 7 meter to 16 meter, but can be extended if we really go for post tensioning and take well care of that. Economical uh, as the amount of concrete and steel is reduced compared to the your solid section. Okay. Uh, light in weight resulting in the light of framework. So, defin definitely when you reduce the section uh, cross section, then this can effectively reduce the framework. Export copper slab also looking visually pleasant, we can uh, you know put some lights uh, so that it can create some you know nice environment from interior. Now, coming to the disadvantage construction of grid structure needs strict supervision and skill labor. Definitely proper execution is required not only the design, but also during the execution the proper alignment of the reinforcement uh, and the form work, especially it is required to be very accurate to get the desired result. Now, casting of that form work or molds to get this particular form. So, suppose when you make the shuttering for the flat slab, it is very simple. We give a horizontal member and the vertical props and we lay the concrete, 
but for this we what we want so we need some mold okay which uh, is basically look like this okay and we place one after another and then we put the reinforcement on top of it and we fill it so basically if we try to convert this so your formwork now look like this so all these members is basically all these molds will placed one after another and then we cast. Now this is very costly item because that to be customized depending on the size of the grit depending on the size whether you need very uh, sharp finish or you need something rectangular or sometimes you need something hexagonal or diagonal. Uh, leave like suppose rectangle uh, your triangle or maybe hexagon. So, you have to customize it. So, then it will not be economical unless it will have a large production. So, for a large number of uses uh, if the mold will have repetitive use and all then it will be economical. Headroom is reduced definitely when you go for this uh, instead of flat slab whenever we use flat slab as continuous beam. So, uh, sometimes we just provide the beams okay, to give the support, but for uh, your uh, waffle slab this is more regular this particular repetition though the thickness is less. So, effectively the uh, height headroom uh, from the in the measured from the socket of that particular waffle slab to the floor getting reduced. So, that you need to provide little bit more height. So, the you know the story height the building height will increase in this case. In buffer sharing problems are with the lighting facility and hanging pipes. So, lighting facility means which are to be placed suppose uh, as because we have uh, this kind of pattern like only from the bottom we get this particular grid and so we are restricted to put the light within that. Uh, particular uh, gap or else it will create problem and also for the hanging pipe services or duct if it is not inbuilt the way uh, like I have shown in the services that how you can put all these services within the uh, waffle strap construction then it will be little bit tough and it will look ugly if it is not being uh, properly executed. So, that uh, is one of the disadvantage. So, coming to the end of this uh, uh, particular lecture, so basically if we summarize, so we start with a uh, one dimensional slab where the parallel beams are acting only one direction, but due to uh, any point load. So, the reflection of this beam will be more compared to the others. So, effectively the distribution of the load will not be that much effective compared to that when you move to the, the you know grid more number of grid. So, the load distributed will have some effect and it will be distributed with more number of uh, you know uh, side support that will be distributed. So, this is advantage of a grid structure and, and it is also called two dimensional structure and this is one dimensional structure right. So, this is also referred as your uh, waffle slab construction uh, we can use this or also we referred as the coffer slab. In the typology we have orthogonal where it is very rectangular rectilinear form we may have dia grid. So, where it is not perpendicular so we have uh, something like this then we have uh, three way that is basically making this kind of grid and then uh, last but not the least the oven where we have seen like
something like this on the bucket and all. And advantage is disadvantage is already we discussed that uh, definitely it can hold uh, the long span, okay. again reduced, reduced material, these are the advantages and disadvantages what we have the increase in height or maybe headroom. Then also uh, the problem with uh, the uh, different fixture like lighting and all, if it is not being uh, included in uh, the section itself and definitely it needs good framework for uh, good framework. Okay, formwork is also uh, that we have discussed earlier formwork is basically also referred as the shattering of the structure okay, and also skill labor. So, with this uh, also we have seen the examples normally this kind of structure being applied where large span to be covered with the less number of columns, less number of material and the useful application in the you know airport in parking area etcetera some convention hall as because this buffer slab also looks very beautiful from uh, inside. So, that can be used for the decoration uh, for the you know even uh, for the small uh, building like even for the restaurant and all and wood, uh, wood uh, timber concrete that can be used. It was used in history with ornamentation and now also uh, I have given you example of Mumbai airport then the other example. Uh, from the public plaza that is from uh, you know Italy. So, that uh, is basically the use of this grid structure. So, with this we conclude um, this particular lecture, these are the uh, study material that already been given in uh, other presentation, you may go through these books and also you go through the links given for uh, you know different pictures, different stories. So, you can um, get more information from that. With that I conclude here. So, next uh, we will cover uh, the sales structure and uh, we will discuss about different application of the sales structure type of sales structure. Uh, so, till then I again uh, you know uh, be very much thankful to you to you know attend this particular course and uh, we will be meeting again on lecture number 26 that is on sales structure. Thank you.